Hello US 101 history class. Welcome to week five. So just something I want to make very clear again that I'm having just recently a little bit of an issue with. The syllabus states that any late work, any work that's eight hours late from the due date requires you to get approval uh, with me before you turn in late work. And I stated in an earlier video um, <clears throat> that if anybody just turns in late work to me without asking for approval, I will automatically keep it at a zero and not accept it, okay? So this is something that I really want you all to be aware of. So what it simply means is this, is that for whatever reason um, that you had late work, you don't have to go into great details of your private life but I do need some sort of explanation. I need you to communicate with me. I want you to explain to me why it was late. And um, most likely I will make an arrangement for you to be able to turn in the late work. But you have to do this, okay? <clears throat> and um, so I just, I just need you to really keep that in mind. That's very important. So um, late work has a chance of being accepted but you are going to have to communicate with me before you even send in the late work. Um, so um, that's, yeah, so that's all I have to say about that. Um, I just want to mention a few things about some of the videos. Um, I'm looking at the video notes and I'm still giving full points, but sometimes when I'm putting a certain video up, I'm trying to see if you're getting the point of the video. And some of you are giving me information that is not really indicating that you're learning anything from it and um i mean for example the one that i had with huey p newton and uh, william f buckley jr talking about revolution um i'm putting this on for a reason and context to our discussion some of you just basically stated the obvious you said this is a discussion with a Black Panther with a conservative. Technically, you shouldn't get points for that. That's not notes on the video. It, I, that, I'm not even sure you watched it if you wrote that because you're just telling me what is obvious. The whole point of video notes is that I should be seeing that you got some point out of it. Now, again, if you missed the point of why I showed it though, um, which is understandable and still fair, um, that's not necessarily I'm making a cr critique of that. Uh, uh, and many of you actually, even though you didn't get the point that I put it on there for, you still demonstrated that you actually watched the video. But um, anyhow, so <laughs> the reason why I put, put that up is that as the discussion happened, keep in mind that, of course, I'm trying to get a theme for us to talk about the question of the American Revolution, even the question of whether or not it was an, a, a real revolution or not. Like, what do we make of it um, in terms of our uh, uh, kind of legendary, or, or should I say, the, 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 the standard narrative of, of a nationalist American on the meaning of this time, or is it something else? I'm wanting you to just be, you know, give some thought into that. Now, Huey P. Newton asked William F. Buckley Jr., he said, before I start this discussion, in the American Revolution, what side would have you been on? And it stumped uh, William, F. Uh, William F. Buckley Jr. for a moment. Well, why is he stumped? He's basically making a critical analysis of, of, of Huey P. Newton. The Black Panthers uh, were armed resistance. They switched into being more um, peaceful, so so the story goes there. But the, but the bottom line is, is they believed in actual resistance to the state, and William F. Buckley Jr. is kind of looking at him, saying, you know, reading off his credentials and his legacy with a certain amount of like uh, annoyance and condesc con being condescending, and this Black Panther is basically saying, well, what if you <laughs> supported the revolution? I mean, after all, you know. And, and, and so here's the paradox of American life, right, that's being introduced. An American conservative uh, wants law and order not to destroy private property, all of these other, these kind of things that are considered 
conservative. But yet, a conservative celebrates a revolution that destroyed private property, attacked police. That the, the, the British were actually our police. They weren't foreigners. They felt like foreigners, but that was our police. So to support the American Revolution was to be quite radical, as radical as a Black Panther, no matter what. I mean, you're at literally supporting violence against the state. So this is a little bit of a, of, of a, a dilemma to try to articulate how this all gets justified in the system. And then what ends up happening is a very interesting discussion takes place kind of regarding the question of revolution with Huey P. Newton and William F. Buckley Jr. And I don't think, I don't think that William F. Buckley Jr. intended to have that kind of conversation with him uh, at the time. So I just thought that was interesting and uh, thoughtful, and I don't necessarily get the impression that a lot of the notes are showing that that's what was understood, why I put it there. That's fine. Um, but just keep in mind, I'm always, everything that I post, whether it's an announcement randomly, like I, t I, I posted one about Ho Chi Minh and his quoting of Thomas Jefferson and Declaration of Independence. Um, I'm trying to be, to get us to think about the implications of, of, uh, of our ideas and our topics and things that are important to Americans and contradictions that we sometimes do well to resolve and others maybe not so much. So now moving forward into this week's uh, uh, modules. Um, I'm kind of really trying to get a lot of you to really think through some things. This is to, um, that are an importance to to many Americans, which is what does the Second Amendment really mean in terms of the kind of rights that it's trying to give Americans in terms of bearing arms? What kind of rights does the Constitution? give Americans in regards to uh, um, our ability to resist the state if we think that the state is unjust. Um, now, I'm, I'm not arguing what you think should give somebody the right to do. I'm asking you to look at the documents and the history, and I'm simply asking you to, as we look at these different aspects uh, and look at what, what we cover here, to, to give a thoughtful um, set of ideas like in the discussion and in regards to what to make of some of, uh, um, you know, what you're reading from the primary sources. And, you know, you will not be uh, judged based on your opinion, I, but I do want you to have thoughtfulness in the discussion, okay? So I want you to give some time and thought to it. It's not going to be easy, but but that's the whole point, you know. I, I, and, and you're getting an idea of how legal scholars in America kind of try to tackle these things, okay? Um, and then you're going to see some very interesting discussions, uh, things I put in here that I, I, I hope you find interesting, like the Whiskey Rebellion barely gets this much attention, and Shays Rebellion. Now, this video I got to mention really quick. I used to be able to have the full video that you could just see easily. And it keeps getting removed. Um, so you can get it now in like, I think it's like a minute or two or 30 seconds and then it'll cut off and switch to another video. I want you to watch the entire thing. It should be able to work uh, with the YouTubes, but it's, it's going to be a little cumbersome. But it's really good. And Shay's Rebellion and the Whiskey Rebellion, I think are very important in understanding the framework, uh, the, the, the context to some of what uh, precedents that we have to think about one to the create you know creating of the Constitution and then what uh, uh, the the actual meaning of the Constitution uh, would be viewed as by our our, our pol political founders in terms of rebellions or potential counter revolutions or other types of revolutions or anything like that. They're just a very um, these are very important but often neglected topics, and Howard Zen covers uh, some of this very well also. So um, I hope you look at that with uh, uh, y you know deep interest and thoughtfulness, and then you you know you have the Constitution paper which you can just work on. Um, anyhow, if you have any questions on that, please contact me. Um, also, please note I should have put it for last week, but in the readings, I mentioned the first state that accepted the United States as an independent nation, and this will sh this most likely will surprise you. 
What nation in the world had acknowledged the United States first after we declared independence and said we are um, a legitimate nation, that they recognize our, our, our independence and sovereignty? You might be shocked, okay? Um, it's not commonly uh, uh, known. Um, although it should be, and so um, I hope you find that of interest. And then I talk about Haiti, which I will actually incorporate a little bit more even into next week's lectures with Thomas Jefferson when I do some more focusing in on him. Um, but um, we need to have our radar on the Haitian Revolution alongside the French Revolution and in what that implied also to the United States. So I'm always trying to get us to, to, to connect ourselves a little bit broader outside of just America into the global context of what's going on at the time. So um, having said that, I hope you have uh, a great week um, and we'll be in touch if you need anything. All right, take care.